Lead scoring is a great way to segment contacts in your CRM. It can be used by marketing to notify sales of new qualified leads. I'm gonna show you how to set up lead scoring in today's HubSpot hack. So lead scoring is available to anyone using any HubSpot hubs at the professional or enterprise level. So if you're using anything professional enterprise, you're good to go. But the first thing you wanna do is log into HubSpot, go up towards the gear icon up here, and then go to properties. So you should already be on contact properties, so you should be good to go. On the right hand side, click to create a property. And if you're on business units, select the business units that you're working on. Uh, but then click the group. I'm just going to go with contact information and then give it a label. So we'll call this our HubSpot Hacks Lead Score. Click Next. And for field type, you'll want to scroll down to score. Cool. Now we can start building our score. So when you're building a lead score, there are two different types of criteria you can set. There's positive and then there are negative scores that you can set or tallies that will add up to each contact score. And you can also test as you're building this out. So I'm going to build to test the score and search for one of the contacts in my CRM to see how they would, what their score would be as I'm actually building it out. So I'm going to blur this out for privacy, but I'm going to pick my contact. and add them here. So you can see the score is gonna go up and down as I change the criteria. So if I wanna add a positive criteria, I'll go on underneath the positive column and click add criteria. And a very popular one that people like to use is form submissions. So I'll say contact property, um, and I'll look for form submissions, number of form submissions. And let's say that it is greater than or equal to one and click apply. So you can see now the score went up to one point. Now, everyone's lead scoring is to be different. What criteria or number they're actually looking for people to hit is different. Some people like to go for, for 10, 50, or 100. I'm going to use 100 in the use case here. So I'm gonna give number of form submissions a little bit higher of a point score than one. So I'm going to click the plus sign here and give this a value of 100. So for example, after any sort of form submission, I want this person's score to go to 100. I'm gonna use that as a trigger later on in a workflow that I'm gonna show you on how to notify your sales team when someone meets uh, the lead score that you're hoping someone meets to notify sales. So when I set the lead score to 100, you can now see their score is 100. So on the negative side of things, say after, if they haven't submitted a form in a certain amount of time, let's add that criteria. So if I actually want last conversion or conversion, sorry, recent conversion date is what I was looking for, is more than, let's say 30 days ago, and apply that filter, that this would be a negative attribute. So let's give that actually, uh, also take away 100 points in the person. So you can see that their recent conversion has been within 100 days of 30 days, so the score still was 100. So if I tweak this a little bit and say within one day, now we can see the score goes down to zero because they haven't submitted a form within the past day. So I'm gonna add this back to 30 days for my lead score. So you can add up to 100 actions or 100 properties here between your positive and negative. So there's plenty of room for you to add all the different properties that you might wanna add. I'm gonna add a few more. So on the positive side, I'm going to add some more fields. So a pretty popular one might be um, page views. So if I wanna go to contact, and say last page seen is equal to, or let's say contains any of, so say like your pricing page contains pricing on that page. If they go to uh, a page with pricing and we'll give this 50 points, they'll gain 50 points to the score. So this contact doesn't meet that criteria, so it hasn't changed the score. Let's add another one. So if I go to, I can use uh, marketing emails, I'm going to stick with contact properties here and search for marketing email. And I'm going to look for marketing emails clicked. And let's say is greater than or equal to two. I'll apply this filter and then I'll give this one a value of 50 points as well. So you can now see there's multiple ways that people can reach that 100 point score and click set. 
So let's add some more negative criteria here. Like for example, if a marketing email click hasn't been within a certain amount of time, we don't want that person's score staying really high forever just because they clicked on two emails a long time ago. So if I go into add criteria, contact properties, and look at marketing emails, and I go to last email marketing click date, and I can say if it's more than, uh, let's say that one within you know, 90 days, apply, we want that to take away 50 points. And set. Our lead score is really starting to come together here. I think this is ready now for you guys to get the idea of how this works um, to now show you how we can actually implement this in our CRM. So I'm going to create the score and now it's ready to be used. So if I go to automations and then workflows, I'm going to create a workflow from scratch. And this is gonna be contact-based because our lead score property was contact-based and click next. So the enrollment criteria for this is going to be based on our lead score. So we'll click in here to our enrollment triggers, do this one filter criteria is met, search contact properties, and then type in the name of the property that you just created. So HubSpot Hacks Lead Score is what I called it. And then we wanna do is greater than or equal to 100 and click save. So from there, whenever someone's lead score equals 100, we want to click the plus sign where we can um, assign this lead to someone. So we can do something like rotate record to owner. Um, we can say contact owner and we can notify our, uh, our sales team. So we can do our sales east team, sales west team. It's gonna notify, um, rotate between these teams if you wanted to, or you could say between specific users as well. So I'm just gonna go with my sales east team. That way we'll assign an owner and then I can create a task from here to um, new lead based on the lead scoring. And I want to sign that immediately. I can put some uh, notes here, contact ASAP. And I wanna make sure I sign this to an existing owner and the contact owner and click save. So from there, I just wanna give this workflow a name and then click to review and publish and turn this workflow on. So when I turn it on, I have the ability to say, yes, enroll existing contacts right now, or no, I only want to enroll contacts moving forward. So turn that on and now I'm ready to go. So that's HubSpot lead scoring. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you implement lead scoring and it works for you. Make sure you like and subscribe for more HubSpot hacks. Thanks for watching.